Hey Sally and I'm one of the gardeners at Vegeta Gardens. Um, I'm going to tell you about uh, polygonatums and how we stop them getting eaten by sawfly larvae. Um, it's one of the biggest problems on polygonatum cross hybridum that we have in the garden. It's a bit of a shame really because um, they are such a lovely plant. You can see they arch over and they have lovely little bell white flowers hanging down and then they become these lovely berries afterwards. But if the sawfly larvae eat them, you can just end up with absolutely no leaves whatsoever and just a stem and eventually that gets eaten too. A few years ago we were still spraying um, to get rid of them and it was the only thing that we did spray in the garden still and uh, we, we had a, a wildlife advisor um, who was tasked with trying to come up with ways of um, if there's anything that we can do and I don't know if it was him or uh, the director David Ward but um, uh, last year we started um, what we call bashing them so every morning we go round um, at a certain time of year so now and a little bit earlier than now and we literally just knock the polygonatum with the back of a rake um, sometimes underneath as well just to dislodge the larvae and it is working it's absolutely brilliant so if you want to grow these and you don't want to spray it is um, a, a technique that you could use but you have to be on it you have to do it every day um, and quite, you know really really regularly if you're in your garden anyway and, and you haven't got a very big garden you don't have to use a rake and you haven't got a very big patch you could just wobble them because what happens is the little larvae Fairly visible, but they can actually get quite large and fat, and there's usually too many of them to pick off, far too many. So um, the idea is by bashing them, they come off, and that's it. They're on the ground. If you shake them into a bucket, what you'll find is that they immediately start. They just um, their instinct is to go up. So when you bash them and uh, the larvae land onto the ground, immediately the larvae will start trying to climb the stems. But if you do that every day, it's either exhausting them or perhaps they're getting predated. We're not quite sure, but um, either way, after about um, a month, uh, eventually um, they'll just give up and you have lovely food in autumn without them um, getting eaten. I mean, you can see what they will do this is a really good stem to show you. It's a little bit depressing when they do get eaten. But you can see that they're starting to get really shredded here. And um, that's just quite early stages. And they can just disappear almost overnight, all of the leaves. Um, so if you're going on holiday, get your neighbours to do it for you, as well as feed the cat. So. Um, I think, I mean, I think they also get eaten a little bit by snails as well, but our main problem is um, the larvae. It's actually little tiny moths that, um, that, 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 that lay the eggs, and they're small and black, and they sort of start to lay eggs around about, I think it's about early May, so, or in late, late April, so it's about four to six weeks afterwards that you'll start to notice signs um, of the larvae emerging and that's when you need to just start shaking them off. They do just seem to affect the cross hybridum in this garden. Um, we also have a lovely uh, polygonatum called Verticilliatum uh, and it's very tall and elegant and uh, has much narrower leaves and doesn't seem to get affected by uh, sawfly larvae at all. Um, so if you want to grow one and this isn't something that you can face doing every day, uh, perhaps that might be um, a lovely plant for you. They are a lovely plant because they can grow in quite dry shade and they, as again, as I said, they've got this lovely arch and habit and in the autumn they can go most beautiful buttery yellows and then you don't even have to cut them down, you can just pull all the spent stems at the end of the year. 
and as you can see they're growing here through um, quite a thick mat of uh, periwinkle of, of vinca and so they can come strongly quite uh, come, come through um, quite strong brown cotton. So this is polygonatum verticilliatum and as you can see it looks very different it's still got the same pattern of uh, flowers and then later on you'll get little um, uh, red berries actually but again it's a lovely plant for uh, relatively dry shade um, not deep deep shade I think it suffers a little bit and if it's um, not pretty dry uh, it can cope with um, but you can see it's a lovely arching shade and really tall and um, in another part of the garden where it is a little bit damper they're even taller than I am um, but you can see next to it is another polygonatum that I here's my bash down here. And um, it is working. Um, and we think that actually it works better than spraying because obviously spray, you tend to sort of go over the top. It sits on the top of the leaf. But guess where all the, the larvae are? They're all underneath. And um, so it doesn't always um, reach them. Also, if you're not spraying, you don't have to worry about predators um, being affected by the chemicals. So, all in all, this is a, a really, really good way of dealing with um, what is actually really nasty.